Welcome back to Barely Serious. This is episode 137. Before we get into the episode and I introduce the guests, I got to plug that on February 26th, I'll be headlining in Bend, Oregon. And then February 27th, I'll be headlining in Seattle at Club Comedy. So get your tickets. I know you people are there. I know you people listen to the podcast in those cities. So fucking no excuse. There's a month and a half in advance. Get that day off of work. Stop doing drugs or whatever the fuck you do. And Come out and see your boy. And with that being said, my guest this week is Rachel McMillan. How's it going? It's going pretty well, man. Do you have any <laughs> any shows you want to plug off top since we're doing that? Yeah, I guess um, so. This cool venue, Vin- Finn Hall, on the twenty first, which happens to be my AA recovery birthday, so I'll be doing that show what in city? Houston. Houston, okay, cool. Yeah, and then um, Look But Don't Touch Comedy, uh, the show I produce is going to be on the 29th. Um, yeah, those are a couple of big ones that I can think of so far. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, before we get into the meat of the episode, I just wanted you to elaborate on something that you were talking about earlier, where you're telling me that you feel like there's a there's enough black dudes in comedy already. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to you know elaborate on your comments? Um, wow, was I passed out? Did I relapse? <laughs> Uh, was this one of those moments where I woke up and was like, hell yeah. <laughs> what would I, what was would I be... saying last night just on stage talking about it? Was I talking about black dudes last night or the night before? I had a few <laughs> I shows I... in Austin that were pretty good. Um, I don't know. Um, uh, I don't think there are enough women <laughs> in Albany. Okay. That's for All sure. Right. How about, right. how about uh, no, not women, but how about like a... Like, um, I don't know, women that I would chill with. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> do, women. <laughs> do do you guys have, like, beefs? Um, like, do you see, like, I don't know, like, you see, like, a girl, like, kill it up there, and you're like, no, fuck I don't that, do that bitch. I don't do that. No? All right, no. cool. Are there people that do? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Damn. Name names. No. Name names. Minute one. I, I, I don't think, I mean, there might be, like, some side comment, like, how did she get this gig, or... We um, all do she's that. She's probably fucking so and so, whatever <laughs> the thing is, you know. Um, I don't know. I'm so old though. Like I'm old, you know. Like I don't really, I don't pay attention to the undercurrent of that stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't really have time to like, like this for me is like keeping me alive. Like what? doing keep doing comedy. Oh, you know, it's it's sort of like, like recovery is very important. But like when I found comedy, it was my heroin. You know. Um, Next thing to heroin. So I was about to say that means a lot coming from you, who actually used to do that shit. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, I was gonna say you're not that old, but then I saw your shoes. My <laughs> them my, New Balance moms. My Crocs. Twos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my Crocs with uh, Dora the Explorer on them. Um, yeah, I know. I love these shoes. They remind me of um, the first pair of shoes I bought when I was in Korea. When I was in Korea, they had weird sizes. When I lived there, when I was in high school. Now you're just calling small people weird. Yeah, you know what I mean, like because <laughs> I've traveled the world, so. Oh yeah, yeah. I guess Koreans are weird, huh? <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I, I got it like half size too big, so I wore more, I wore them around all weird, and now they fit. So. Yeah, they remind me of my. I actually have my a backstory for that. For those shoes, or yeah. for Korea. W- w- what do you mean? You said you have a backstory for that, but you referenced those shoes and I have Korea. a lot of backstories for Korea, but <laughs> okay. I do have th- these shoes actually are they, they're a reminder of when I was living in Korea. Yeah, for sure. You're wearing a half size too big is weird and you couldn't run in them. So I really only use them for, um, you know, looking cool purposes. But I guess I've I'm now looking like the single mom that I am. You yeah, know? yeah, those laces are a little too tight to be looking cool. Are they? You got to unlace them. I do. No, not I'm with not those. I'm not taking my shoes off here. I don't trust this process. <laughs> with kidding. what? I'm opening opening question. How many black dudes have you banged? <laughs> <laughs> that was oh damn. That's the one. That's I, the always, one I was gonna. Th- ask. I always um uh for the past like 25 episodes, I've been starting it by just thinking of something foul and just like making it, you know, just like that. And I think the question, fuck, I think the question that I was gonna ask, uh, I was like the next woman that comes to the podcast, I'm just gonna straight up be like, so your body count just minute like fucking 20 seconds in but damn yeah i wouldn't know the answer to that really if people i've killed or people that <laughs> <had sex. laughs> both both combined <laughs> when i was a drug dealer or, you know. <laughs> your shoes actually remind me of my mom and it's funny because it brought back a memory that it's um she was like picking me up from school one time and she had do you remember sketchers the shape ups we're no. like, oh man, there was this brand of shoes called Shape Ups, and they had like a little hump, like in the in like yeah, where the yeah. ball of your foot would be. So like when you're walking, it's supposed to like tone up your ass. <laughs> and so my mom had a pair of these Shape Ups, 
and uh or she like on like a road rage incident or like a parking lot like road th- or like i don't know what it's called when you're in a parking lot but yeah. a rage incident and the person like surrounded my mom's car with like dog shit like they just had like you know they just lived there she parked in front of their house mm-hmm. and they so they just had like piles of dog shit and they surrounded her car with it and she had to like step in dog shit in her shoes this to like get in her car weird stories it's oh no I, I grew up in orange county california yeah so it's like just a bunch of like entitled people but also like nearly homeless people yeah and it's like it it's really fun I miss I'm just it. grateful I have shoes, Galen. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been pretty funny if you're like, these are actually the first pair I was able to I afford bu- in yeah, 20 I years. Bought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With my own money. What are you trying to say about my shoes, Galen? And I did it with comedy. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, do you want to talk recovery? Do you want to talk? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, first of all, Since before we even... You are my biological son. <laughs> <laughs> how, um, how how old are you total? I know you're not total? supposed to ask, but like... Um, so I turned 40 in August. 40, all right. And how long have you been sober, and how long did you do drugs? Six years in, on Friday. Nice. I haven't drank alcohol since 2008. Um, I have been to... That's what Obama does, guys. He cures people. That's what, Yeah, there's a joke <laughs> about it. Probably oh, really? I've gotten sober after Obama was <laughs> Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I... Um, how long did I... Dr- I mean, I... I had Everclear when I was nine, and um, and then fast forward to like high school days. Um, I started smoking pot first, and then um, my um, <clears throat> the the father of my my kids. Ironically, like we, I had Christian, my first son, and I I I had another suitor. Okay, so I was dating someone for a while, and then after and this was when you were in high school. No, this is after college. Actually, oh, okay. so fast forward. So like I I had. Three potential dads. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. So you didn't know who the dad was? I didn't. And um, it's well, when you're 23 and you're out of college, it's not like, like I dated someone for like nine months and then um, and then I had a one night, kind of one night standby. I slept with a friend of mine who who I was really close to. And then. Nice. Um, and Shout then out to fa- that guy. Finally breaking that, that barrier, huh? Yeah. Well, that was he. Uh, poor guy. Poor then, guy. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. He was excited. He was like, I got to do the right thing. And then he ran and got like a new car to what? fit the baby. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Which was weird because you're like, uh, we don't, but he was such a good friend that I felt, I feel like that was more important to him than just like the so sex and stuff. So how did you not know? So you said there was three dudes. How did you not, like, were you just like, you'd like hook up with one in the morning, take a shower, go get wasn't, lunch it, with no, another see, it guy? It wasn't like a consecutive time. Oh, so I say three, but like, you know, you can, you can, <clears throat> How do you say? It? So I found out that I was pregnant at five months pregnant. Damn. Yeah. Were you like fat or something? No, I was like 122 pounds. How'd you not know? Um, I was doing meth at the time. Oh, all right. Yeah, so it's pretty tiny, but like, <clears throat> I mean, again, back then it wasn't like I was like I was a meth head. I just I did meth. You occasion. just dabbled in I it. I just you dabbled just in just crystal meth. Doesn't just everybody dabbled do with, that with the meth? <laughs> Hey, you want to come over and watch the Laker game and do some meth? Nah, bro, I only do that on Tuesdays. That's right. It's probably only on Tuesdays. Um, yeah, so f- the, I dated him for nine months, and then we separated, and then I had, like, this fling with a friend of mine. And you, then Wait, 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 wait. Uh, who did you... Who was this first guy? Was it not the friend? His name is Garrett. His name is Garrett. Oh, we're name-dropping these dudes. Sweet. I, I don't give a shit. I mean... Ironically, I was telling my friend, I was like, yeah, he was looking at my Instagram stories. I haven't seen him since 2005. And like last week, he was looking at my Instagram stories. I was like, that's interesting. You haven't. <laughs> you're going to hit him up? No, he's. I don't. You should fuck with him. You should be like, he was yours after all. So are you going to pay child support? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you owe me like fucking 40 grand backlogged, boy. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. But the, so the guy that happened to be ha- is the father. Um He's a childhood friend. I grew up with his family in Kingwood. Um, Sounds like I, a like a game show. Who did you want to be the dad out of these three dudes? The none guy of that him. none of them. <laughs> no, well, that's not a choice. I was a you, kid, twenty three, having twenty three. It's not so. Base. I had the baby. I had my son, and then I worked at a family law firm. And I was thinking, you know, I, I really should. I didn't want child support. Like I wasn't. That was the motivating drive. I just wanted him to know. I felt like my son needed, you know, to know. Sure. I didn't want him to be like talking and be like, "What's that's my dad and have all these memories or whatever or use it against me. So we want to use it against you. You know what I mean? So we wound up getting married. Um, The guy when I called him, I said, you know, he's like, I already know. You know, I already know that this could be 
with my son and I'd like to get the test. So we did the test and it said it was positive and then that was, uh, so Christian was born in June. I told Chris, the dad, in August, and then we got married in October, and then... So is, uh, so Rachel McMillan, huh? So is that his last name? Or no, is that, like, you just no. reverted we back? We divorced. We're not married anymore. Right, 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 yeah. but, like... I actually never changed my name. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. You don't have to do that extra paperwork and no. shit? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> so... my mom and my stepdad, they divorced in 2009, but she just, like kept us she just she that's weird she like reverted so she has so legally she's still uh Jeanette Nash but uh like on Instagram and Facebook she added back her like maiden name and shit Mm -hmm. so what's your real last name my my real last name is Atwell so you're Galen Atwell I'm Galen Atwell but I was adopted in like (sighs) 2005 Hmm. by my stepdad so he's like my dad i just say stepdad because what's your stepdad's last name nash and so like he adopted me so i took his last name because it was so they got married in like oh three and uh so i only had like a single mom for like until i was like seven or eight Mm -hmm. um and then um which is still still together what are they still together no they divorced in oh nine okay which is what i'm saying like she still you know has she still has the nash last name but like uh, he adopted me, and I took that last name because it was just weird. Because they were having, they had my middle brother in 05. and then it was just weird because it was like it was him and her and the my soon to be middle brother, and they all had the same last name. And then I was just like the odd sore thumb out, mm-hmm. and I already kind of felt like the odd sore thumb out anyway. Mm-hmm. So it was just kind of like I was just like, yeah, I'll take it just to like fit in or whatever. But like I feel like galen ash like it kind of like slips off the tongue like a little bit easier like on stage and shit Mm -hmm. i guess i could just change it back like it'll be a trivia question one day maybe you still refer to him as your your dad yes yeah yeah yeah. oh yeah he's my dad i was just i just refer to him as stepdad on the podcast because i've had my biological dad on the podcast and so then i gotta have him on eventually but he doesn't want to come on until he's like retired from like his job because he's like the dean of some college or whatever that's pretty cool yeah i'm just like well i mean nobody's gonna like what are we gonna say We've okay. There's been some fucked up shit on the podcast, but like, what are we gonna say that's gonna get you fired, or that your students could like use against you? Like nothing. You never know, though. I guess at one time in Tijuana, huh? That's Just right. Like, <laughs> so is mob <Mom> good? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Behind that trash can, you know? Yeah. No. Mm. It's so. So yeah, we we I grew up Christian. You know, I grew up in a Christian household. I still am a very what, like devout years? Christian. No. Oh. Yeah. My son's name is Christian. And, um, oh, okay. more ironic. I'm not, I mean, you're like, okay, meth head, <laughs> 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 but no, I, I do. I have, I have a pretty, I have a pretty strong grasp on who or what God is to me. So, um, that was never the problem. The problem is me, but like, I, I liked what you said right there. You said to me, not like a, I'm a force it on other people type of thing, or like this is what you have to believe. Ironically, when I played soccer in college, I went to a Baptist college, um, Baylor and Washita, and the the girls would be like, like when I'd say, because they were all very, they'd pray, and they'd, one girl, like sometimes they would say scripture to like, okay, team, whatever the scripture was, and then one girl looked at me one day, and she was like, uh, I said something about, oh, I started, she was, she was in trouble because she was late, and I was a captain of the team, so I would always like, like if someone was in trouble, then I would take the fall with them. Like I would run with them afterward as well, a show. Lame. It's not lame. It's what you do as a oh, leader. Oh. Like, you know, as a leader, you, you, you go, okay, you're in trouble. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. we win as a team and <clears> we <throat> lose. It's on me. That's right. Yeah. Well, it's not uh, it kind of yeah. like, what are you doing late? What's your problem? I'm the one who's a drug addict. <laughs> you're just were, you, were you doing drugs back then? I smoked a lot of weed. Yeah. Oh, I was about to say that. I didn't be... drink though. Did you do? Did you guys have like pasta parties? Pasta parties. No, we did that in cross country though. Like you ran cross country? Yeah. Hey. I just ran the half marathon last year. Oh, nice. What yeah. was your time? I don't, I think three hours, two hours, something. I don't oh. know. I, oh. It was with friends. It was with like, oh, it, yeah, was yeah. With, it was with recovery friends. I used to run competitively, all right? So. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. What, what's your mile time? My mile time was 418. 418 is pretty good. Yeah. And my half marathon time when I was a senior in high school was 113.45. So are you still running? No. Fuck Why? No. I just, I, I dedicated like eight years of my life to it, and now I'm just like, it's for really what? It's not that long. Do you love it? No, I I, didn't, I hated running. Actually, like, I hated running. I was just really good at it, and I loved, like, I was just so competitive, and I loved racing. Like, yeah. racing was like, like, I would do that all the time. Like, that's <sighs> that's just like, it's giving me jitters right now thinking about it. Yeah. But, uh, 
because it's like it's not like football or nothing like racing is like you're going out there and it's like you put in the work you know day in day out two times a day and then you go out there and you race these kids or adults and shit like that and it's like it's you versus them and it's just like to just beat someone like that and just or like my favorite part was you know when like you would like break someone and they would just fucking gas out and just fall back it's just fucking i could jerk off to that like it's just you should when you go running next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm picturing maybe, all maybe, this. Maybe not. Maybe if I had an indoor track and it was just me. Yeah. But uh, no, yeah, yeah no. I it's love running. It's a good high, especially for said, someone who's such an adrenaline junkie like me. You said eight years isn't that long. I feel like it's. I'm only 25, so eight years is like half my life. <laughs> eight eight years is what? That's like 25 percent of my life. Yeah. 20, 30 percent of my life. So it's like an every day, and it's a. Uh, I mean, I credit cross country like the work ethic it carried on it's what i it's like the, just built my work ethic to what it is now yeah but i don't know i just feel like i see some of the dudes that i used to like race against and they're still running right mm -hmm. i stopped running like competitively in 2017 um and i see them still running it's 2022 now and it's like from when i stopped running in 2017 to now is where like i feel like i really started living like experiencing stuff like trying new things and doing all this crazy stuff because now i don't have to oh i can't go to that i have practice in the morning or, oh i can't do this because i got to go run right now or i all my saturdays are for you know competitions and shit and like i see people that are still running now and like doing that every day it's like man like i feel like they haven't even started living yet oh yeah in a way like i'm not saying i feel like i'm better than them i'm just saying <laughs> that like i feel like i'm like fuck like i can't believe they're still doing that. And one of them just made the Olympics, which is fucking cool. So I guess he's like, okay, that's a good story. That's, but like for the people that like are just middle tier, like they're not, it's like, they're not going to make the Olympics. They're not going to get sponsored. They're not going to, you know, be in ads or anything. It's like, man, just retire and start Move a family on. or something, you know, get some <clears throat> future heroin addicts. Pregnant. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Anyway, so how old's your son now? 17? 16. 16. So two boys. Two boys. All right. The other one, we don't know what. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. And it's the same, the same dad? Same dad. All yeah. right, cool. That's cool. At least you know that. So, yeah, he, I called him dad, the dad, dad, and uh, I said, you know, you're probably the dad. You are probably the dad. I'm 98, 9. What year was this? This was in 2005. Yeah, yeah, because my middle brother just turned seventeen. He was born in January of twenty two thousand five. That's crazy. Yeah, um, you know, because I was just trying to picture, and for the picture the listeners to picture how, because like we're so used to like technology now, uh, that I feel like when when you said I called him, I'd be like, why didn't you just fucking text him? Right. <laughs> but it's like oh five. Like you probably did you use we like a landline? Do you remember the call? I you do. I was standing in the law firm that I worked at with you my You called uncle. him from the work phone? I hey, sure. boss makes a dollar, I make a dime. That's I, why I shit on company <laughs> time. Just time you made that baby daddy call at hey, work. Hey, what's up? <laughs> you remember me? He probably thought he was about to get served or something. It's like, why he does really he say did. law he, firm on he the... He goes, I know why you're calling. And I said, he's like, I'd like to meet him. That's the first thing he said. How old was he when you made the call? Um, So junior, it was four months. Oh, okay. I thought Four he was like, old? let me take him to a baseball game. Yeah, let yeah, me, yeah. Let me meet the squirt. Let <laughs> me meet this little guy that looks like me. We met at, a, I think, like Chili's or Applebee's or one of the restaurants. Oh, to meet the kid? Yeah. I thought he meant for like, he like made, laid a move on you at Applebee's. Kind of. I mean, then we, you know, then we sort of like, uh, what do you want to do about this? And it was like, well, let's just develop this relationship. We got married um, October 5th. Two, yeah. How many months later was that? Four months later. Damn. Yeah. It's real Hit it, development. Quit it, and then move on. Yeah. <laughs> and then, well, so he had kind of a shady background. He had stepdads and stuff that physically abused him. I was about to say, how's that shady? <clears throat> so that's pretty normal. It got weird. So, like, I, I, we moved into our home after living with his parents and my parents for a little while and taking care of the baby, um, you know, saving some money to buy a home. How old was this dude? He is, I want to say, four years older than me. So he's okay, like cool. 44, 45. Cool. And um, great guy. He's a great guy. He's not a bad guy. I think he just had some trauma from childhood because he carried it into our marriage. So I was like, let's make love. We just moved into our first home, carry me over the <clears throat> threshold, sort of front door, you know, magical, excuse me, <clears throat> experience. And uh, that night, he, he wound up like really beating the shit out of me. He what? Up, yeah. 
while you're on your honeymoon? Like basically. Yeah. What? Yeah. That's crazy. My face was unrecognizable for what? Like two Why? Months. We, I said, can we make love? Let's put Christian in the other room. And we had been up all day moving, and we had like a few beers. And um, I remember I said, let's let's take the baby and move him into another room. And um, why? It's not like he's gonna remember it. Yeah. Well, I mean, we weren't gonna like let's fuck on the floor. <laughs> <It was laughs> the what are you talking about, Galen? <laughs> Just leave the baby there, honey. I'll just go ahead and make a pallet on the floor. This is real romantic, um, which turned into true romance. But um, I just remember I, I got I have sort of my mom's temperament, but she was no one was physically abusive. But I I had this like green bean can, and to to be a like sort of so we had been drinking. This isn't normal, trust me. I know, but like I I remember throwing it to like kind of scare him or startle him or be like. I'm mad, you know, and I'm young and I'm stupid. But anyway, it turned into, yeah, like hair pulling. And so have you ever thrown a green bean can again? Probably. I've probably <laughs> thrown worse. How about <laughs> this time? <I'm> like, uh, <laughs> carrying my nine millimeter now. Um, No, no, I haven't. But it, so the point to that is I, you know, at the time I was like drinking and kind of doing like dabbling in, in drugs a little bit, but I wasn't a full blown drug addict. Um, you said you were doing meth when you found out you were pregnant, though, and he was five I was, months deep. But I wasn't a full blown drug addict. Like I, oh, I, I oh, was oh. like, you know, like I'm gonna try this, do that. Oh, I don't really like it. I'm not gonna do it anymore. So I, does Christian have like a sixth finger from like? Not at all. Just Homeboy a giant place, dick. Yeah. <laughs> meth. Dick. That's what meth does. Gave him a fucking uh, nine inch. I was dollar. scared about that when I found out though that I was pregnant. Obviously, I was like, um, I, f- you know, I'm, I fucked up my kid. This is awful. But I, I remember. Did you like talk to your doctor like about it? Oh yeah, yeah. What? I started going to a doctor and um, and then uh, about eighteen months later, we we created Thomas, my second son. So eighteen months after, yeah. Why? Okay. Unorthotricycline. So. Why would you go with Thomas? He like, went what, with what? Thomas. Oh, okay. I was about to say. I was like, what goes into like? It's his first name, actually. Oh, you want to hear something fucking hilarious? Yeah. Right now? So when I was out in Houston and I did <laughs> your show, uh, I went and I did the secret group show right afterwards. And yeah. there's this Facebook group for it. Yeah. And uh, uh, so, so I guess I guess someone in the green room had COVID, and so someone like messaged this group, uh, and was like and so for like two days everybody was like just got tested tested negative and then mike tested positive and like everybody's like updating this fucking chat <laughs> for like a couple days right and yeah. so then uh i said um or dulce max said that i need an std test and i just got an std tested uh and so i sent my results for that uh and then people kept updating it about their just got a negative rapid test hopefully we all dodged the bullet and you know four four heart reacts and so yeah. i said uh i hope throughout our careers in the existence of covid we keep updating this chat for years to come uh and so then people kept updating it right and so then fast forward like three weeks later on sunday i i texted the group and i said just tested negative glad we're all safe but and everybody started heart reacting to it and i like like after the third one, I realized that they probably think that like this whole time for the past two weeks that I actually had COVID and just finally tested negative when really I was just making fun of the stupid ass chat. And I was like, fuck, now all these people think that I had COVID this whole time and that I've been like going out. Did anybody say that or allude to no, that? No, no. You're just crazy. <laughs> Every, everybody just started liking it. And I was like, ah, oh, well, uh, either this joke. We were praying for you in Houston. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a Galen. No, no. Oh, he doesn't have COVID for the next and two and a half did, weeks. We, no, no, that's good that you didn't. That's a weird, that's a weird thing. All that. It's weird that I didn't though, because Mike and I. Who's we were, Mike? Mike Eaton. Oh, okay. We were driving around uh, after your show. We carpooled in my car over to the secret group, and then we were hanging out in that green room together. And then we, you know, we got in my car again. We drove back to his hotel, like all the stuff. So like yeah. where we got exposed together, he was in my car together, like all this shit. And then I just straight up, well, I also didn't get tested. All those other people were just like, I'm negative. So I was like, well, thanks for getting tested for me then. Cause well, you <clears throat> would have had either symptoms or not. I, I didn't mean, have some, oh, <clears throat> well, I had like a sore throat, but it was like a day. And I was like, maybe I'm just not drinking enough water. That, that was probably it. Yeah, because I just I just started drinking water and it just went away. I was like, I don't think it's fucking COVID. But the whole thing, COVID's all it's all weird. Yeah, it is pretty weird. It's a 
<clears throat> weird, very, um, I feel like everybody's, I feel like everyone's just a little crazy about it. <laughs> well, we're also like three years deep now. We're like turning the page on like the third calendar year with it. And like we're, nobody's still on the same page. Like uh, even out here, like, you know, nobody wears masks and shit, but now I got to wear a mask at work, which I guess is fine because whatever. Uh, but I went to Chipotle mm -hmm. uh, like three days ago. And I only had like 15 minutes. I was just trying to like grab a burrito and then go because we had to like go somewhere. Um, and they were like closed. Only mobile orders only. And mm -hmm. I was like, what the fuck? Like we're in Texas. Like this is bullshit. I was just here last week and you guys weren't doing that. But then you go to, you know, whatever other places and you just walk right in without a mask. It's like, what the fuck is going on yeah. here? Like I don't. Yeah, it's going to be going on for probably a couple more years. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. I just want I wish we could just. Like, you know, Thanos just snap. All the people that are going to die from it that we're trying to protect, just let them die anyway. Why are we dragging it out if, you know, it's their destiny to die just from COVID? Just snap them away. Just snap. snap them. And then we can just, like, go back to our normal lives. That is kind of what's happening. <laughs> yeah, but it's like but it's like dragging out, right? So, like, you could get COVID in eight months and then die nine months from now, and that's, like, your destiny or whatever. Why can't we just like snap all those people? And just get me out of the way. No, I'm just we can go back to our lives. And if I get snapped away, so be it. <laughs> I'm willing to sacrifice myself so everybody else can go back to being normal. I'm not. I don't want to die. <laughs> but you're gonna die if you're if it's your destiny. To, if you're gonna die from COVID, right? Just end it. Just snap me away. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's all a bunch of I think it's all a bunch of crazy bullshit. To be quite honest. Have you gotten a booster? Have you gotten your vaccine? I did get the vaccine just because there were a few venues that like wouldn't let you in like without Super it. Group. Uh, well, no. Well, is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I didn't. That's not the one that it was for. It was one for in San Francisco. But I, um, yeah, so I got it. And then I got the, the second one mm -hmm. like a couple of weeks later. And like, I, I just remember be, for being like, like paranoid for like two weeks. I'm like, I'm fucking like, not, not like a chip or nothing, but I was just like, I'm going to get like Bell's palsy or like, I'm gonna, like <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was gonna like That's I'd wake up in the yeah. Uh, yeah I'd wake up and check my face in the morning and be like all right cool I could still move my mouth this way up and down pretty and, much and yeah it's like, but like which nothing, one did you get uh fucking Pfizer baby oh no it's the best yeah. one I got Johnson and Johnson no you didn't really yeah, I did quit playing I'm not playing you're saying that for the podcast aren't you I love it did you really get Johnson yeah. and Johnson why. What? what was it? You're like, I, I think the whole thing is a bunch of bullshit. Let me just get the one that doesn't work. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? The placebo? Yeah. Fuck y'all. <laughs> well, that's just the one where people were getting like heart attacks and shit, weren't they? And mm -hmm. they were like, let me, let's, let's recall this for a second. And like mm -hmm. a week later, they were like, yeah, fuck it. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. <the> fuck. <laughs> I had to. My, my boss walked in and was like, uh, we're going to need everyone to probably be vaccinated, you know? So I was like, all right. I work at a law firm, so I figured I kind of want to keep my career, you know. Are you are you like a lawyer, or are you just like? You just uh, said you were I work as a paralegal. Which is. Um, we do everything for the lawyer except for go to court. Okay, that's dope. Yeah. You like get him coffee and shit. Um. Or like file paperwork. I'm past that. <laughs> You're past that. All yeah. Right. <laughs> that was 2005. All right. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> No, I didn't. I went. I went to paralegal school. Um, I just finished my first semester of law school um, at U of H. So things have changed since recovery, man. You know. Is that like online? Oh, actually, no. yeah. So what? It is online, actually, because of COVID. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was asking. The fucking uh, Zoom University. Yeah. There's this. So, like I said, I I manage a Jimmy John's now, or I'm the assistant manager, right? I don't want to take too much credit, right? I, I don't want to sound. You said manager when I walked in. That's I don't want to sound cooler than it already sounds. <laughs> right? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the assistant manager, but which is wildly hilarious. That like, <laughs> they have an assistant. No, no, that <laughs> I'm the that I'm the assistant. <laughs> They're like people like have to be like if they want to go home early, they have to ask me or be like, what should I do next? It's like <laughs> it's right. Put on my big boss pants. I change out of these pajamas and I put the big boss Jimmy Levi's Jones. on. What is it? Yeah, the, I put on my apron. <laughs> but um, it's um. Oh shit! Oh yeah, no. There's this. There's this like 18 year old girl that works there, right? And she goes to the University of Texas, mm -hmm. and it's like all online now because like COVID, or it's for, you know, quote unquote. It's like they come back from like break on the 18th, so they've been all on break for like a fucking month now, That's which is awesome. insane. That's great. Uh, well, yeah, I'd be I'd be stoked, but not if she's like her tuition's the same. I was asking her about it. It's mm -hmm. like all the same. Like yeah. she has to. 
and she just has to like be in Zoom classes. And I think the only thing good that comes from the Zoom classes is like the videos that like go viral that I see on like Twitter of like girls getting like fucked in their class and they don't realize that their camera's on and shit like that. Or like the girls that are like you you can see them like drinking. You just on standby waiting for girls to get fucked in the ass or whatever you said no 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 like i'll be scrolling on twitter and like a video will go viral okay. like someone will be have- i thought maybe galen just sits at home after before jimmy john's and then search just does wait. the search to wait to see what girl in class will get fucked when she comes into jimmy john's today no 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 i'm saying that like these videos go viral you haven't seen these no oh man they're hilarious it's like so like, it'll be like the class and so you'll see like like 15 or 16 kids cameras on and like one of <laughs> One of them will, won't realize that, like, in the back, like, on the bed, like, they're fucking, like, they didn't realize that their camera's still on. And then it's funny because, like, you'll just now notice each student start realizing, like, they'll look and they'll realize yeah. that the person's, like, getting fucked and just seeing all their reactions. It's the funniest fucking thing. Be like cool if you put on the bottom, though, at Venmo, at Cash App. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. afterward. Hey, you enjoyed the show. Yeah. <laughs> Wait till your next class. Yeah. <laughs> There's and there's people that like that'll like fuck around too. Like they'll like there's videos of people like taking like they'll take be taking a shit like in class and like, it's yeah, I think it's freaking hilarious. Yeah, like, that's I would, crazy. That's I, wild. I can't imagine what I'd be doing if I had like Zoom class. I'd be getting kicked out. Yeah, no, I mean these classes are boring as shit. But we have <clears throat> like all the hearings and stuff on Zoom, which are also kind of boring as shit. Really? So, yeah. So what went wrong? What went wrong? I, With you know, O.J. Simpson's case. O.J. Simpson's case. I've watched all the documentaries. Let's go. Let's go he head to really head right now. Really good lawyer, huh? Nothing went wrong. He had a really good lawyer. Know. You know, what a guy. They don't fit. You can you get must away with quit. murder. That's right. You can. That's sort of the. Well, isn't it something like it's like seventy something percent of all murders just go unsolved? Pretty much. No. Like, like if I wanted to, like, I could just like overnight tonight. I could just drive to Kentucky shoot some homeless guy Mm -hmm. and just fucking drive back here no they would never nobody would ever fucking know isn't that crazy maybe the podcast would give some clues well I mean this was just (laughs) this was just an example hypothetical when I go to Kentucky tonight and murder a homeless guy (laughs) I'd get the medal of honor depending on what city I go to and I got away with it and I said it on the podcast went back to Jimmy John's made some sandwiches and went home (laughs) well isn't that I think it's funny like you ever watch forensic files no, not really. Oh, man. It's funny seeing how some of these people get caught because it's like they try to like the show will hype up like the forensic aspect of it. But it's usually in like a it's you usually when people get caught, it's because it's in a it's in a you're in a fit of rage or there's some sort of something some law of like long history of whatever story. Right. Yeah, it'll like be like the ex-girlfriend story. fucking yeah. kills or like some love triangle yeah. gone wrong. Or, yeah. But uh, <clears throat> it's crazy. There was this one where it's like they caught this like notorious i think it was btk Mm. uh like this notorious serial killer who was like uncaught for like years and like he thought so like he was like he would like leave clues for the cops right but not enough to like get caught and then like 20 years later (laughs) he like added some shit to like a floppy disk and like from a and he was using like a computer at the library and I guess, like, I don't even know how floppy disks work. I think it's like a storage. Me like, <laughs> like, it's like a storage something or whatever. Mm-hmm. But he, like, left it. Like, he was, like, leaving it as, like, a, like another, like, I'm back type of thing for, like, the cops, right? But they just took the floppy disk and, like, looked at the location, went to, like, the library and saw, like, on the day that it was, like, printed on. What an asshole. Yeah, and so they just they just caught the guy. And it was just some old dude. And, like, they got him. He's just like, well, you fucking, I think he's still alive. And he was just, he was in Wichita, in Kansas. Yeah. yeah, he's just riding away. I'm not a big criminal law person. Like, I dated a prosecutor for a very long time after, even after my husband and I sure. divorced. And, <clears throat> I mean, we, yeah, it was, that was, um, criminal law is just, especially on the, on the prosecuting side, it's, it's, it was fine. Some of those guys are pretty crooked, but, um. Well, what kind of law do you focus on then? I like, okay, right now I work in personal am- Injury and, and, and litigation, but I, I love family law. Like the four 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 four. Call like me money. now. I like money. Huh? Money litigation. Oh, yeah. like if someone Big owes suits. someone other shit. Um, well, like medical malpractice or, you know. Oh, just big lawsuits. So it's just like when people like sue other people. Then it's not like if like mm-hmm. I murdered someone, like I wouldn't just like it's walk just in, lame. see you on the case, be like, I'm fucking free, <laughs> I'm safe. I got a homie on the inside. <laughs> I would, I would, I mean, when I become a lawyer, I'd probably help. So I would, I don't know, it depend. Well, I'd, yeah, I would help my friends. 
I mean, I, I think that it's crazy, nobody, especially with drugs and stuff, though. Oh. I feel like everybody. I don't. I don't know. I don't feel. I, don't, I just. I have a hard time with now knowing what recovery is like and what the disease is and what it does to you. That people don't deserve thousands of chances. So I definitely couldn't be a lawyer just because of like I don't know, like I'm competitive or whatever. So like, like I couldn't take on like a case where like I know like like you know Chris Watts. Mm. Ba- uh, the football player. No, Chris Watts is like the guy who like. He had two daughters and a wife, and he, like, killed them all and, like, like loaded them into his truck and dumped them in some oil field or whatever. Okay. And, like, he got caught, obviously, and it was, oh, like— a, I automatically was, assume it's a football player. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, he could have been. Uh, <laughs> but he, like, got caught, and, like, his neighbor had, like, surveillance camera, f- like, from his own house of the dude, like, loading the bodies, like, into his truck and, like, driving away. And so, like, they had, like, clear-cut <laughs> evidence of him just, like, throwing the bodies in the trunk, right? But, like— like dude like chris watts had a lawyer he had to have a fucking lawyer for like whatever the the trial was and it's just like i couldn't take that case knowing that there's a straight up video of you loading the bodies we already lost bro like i'm now i just gotta waste my time for yeah. fucking a year fuck you dude i don't want to do that yeah there's some really bad people out there caitlin oh oh those are i thought it, i thought it was like if you can't afford an attorney like you'll get appointed one and i'd be the dude that gets appointed to that guy <laughs> yeah this is, and be like, well, here goes a fucking year of my life that's right. defending this asshole. Like, I thought that's how it was. I mean, yeah, if you get a court appointed lawyer, you're you're fucked. <laughs> you're fucked. Yeah. Wait, like, are those just like they got them online? Uh, like, you would walk. It would be you, like court appointed, just walking in like down it. So you're fucked. But if you want, pretty we can much hang here's out. your offer. What do you want it to be? Do you want to do you want to do go to prison? Do you want to do that? Yeah, yeah. That sucks. And what if they're like, I want to fight it. Be like, I don't really do that kind well, of stuff, you'd buddy. You'd be sitting for a long. You would probably be sitting the same amount of time that you'd sit when you go to prison. Oh. yeah. But where would you be sitting? Would you still be in, in Harris prison? County or county county jail? Which is worse? Um, I would say prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because prison's like ass rape shit, and then like county I never jail. Was ass, I was never ass raped. You were in jail. I was in prison for what? For pawning my Al-Anon sponsor's stuff for drugs. You were his staff. No, her stuff. Her her jewelry. Oh oh stuff. I think it said staff. So I was picturing like was Gandalf so about, Gandalf like, the Grey staff. I was like, what do you mean you pawned her staff? I, I did. Like, I pawned her staff. <laughs> <laughs> her no, staff. I, I would I, I had a problem with uh, like when when I do drugs, I love stealing from people, especially these people that I feel like are assholes. I'm gonna let my dog back inside now. Go so ahead, let her in. <laughs> no, just to, to watch my stuff. Yeah. Protect no. the bobbleheads. Don't protect the posters. Protect the bobbleheads. <laughs> protect the posters. I don't like stealing now, but when I was high, yeah, I liked. I had this, like, I didn't. I wasn't like like a, like a kleptomaniac type thing. No, not a kleptomaniac. Um, really, it was like a like sort of the Dexter of like, like of stealing <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Kleptos are crazy. Are they? Well, I went on a I went on a road trip with this guy who's like a self proclaimed like kleptomaniac, and like I I I, or I think what it's klep- self proclaimed. Well, I think klepto is when you just can't stop yourself from stealing shit, right? Yeah, yeah, I get, yeah. I get, yeah. It's, well, like it's not like he was diagnosed, is what I mean. It's not like he went to a doctor and they're He's like, just an asshole. <laughs> well, it's one of those things where like we would stop at like a gas station, right? And like we would just be in the car, and he would just like he would like you know how you you get uh like when you're on the road and like they would have like bottle openers like with your name on it mm-hmm. like he stole like a bottle opener with, with some random dude's name on it and i was just like dude why and he's like it's just the rush and i was like you're retarded that's weird i was like you're retarded that's bro. just weird to me you because did, you're you're taking a risk just said evan on it and i was like evan. dude what do you what do you <laughs> need to do with an evan bottle opener bro i'm just like put that shit back what are you fucking stealing that for it's like two dollars honestly bro. dude i don't like i know that we i we being in the you know comedy and stuff i don't really even like like I'm, I don't like hanging out with people late who are drinking. I don't like, like I don't mind people doing drugs and stuff. But it's just, it's not my game anymore. Like that kind yeah. of lifestyle isn't, just doesn't do it for me anymore. Yeah, no. When it gets real snowy in That's the green right. in the green room, I'm like, all right, well, it's time for me to go home and so I think I got a DVR. No, I don't. No, because I mean, I grew up with my mom, so I don't. You watched it. Yeah, so I don't. No, it's not like she was doing like hardcore crazy shit, but it was like. I didn't. I just never really wanted to get into drugs. I didn't start drinking until I was uh, twenty-two. Yeah, twenty-one or twenty-two. I I think it was twenty-two. I didn't start drinking until I was twenty-two because I thought I was gonna never drink. But then now it's like it's the shit. Uh, <laughs> but uh, 
No, and then I used to be like a major stoner. Like I would smoke every day, but then I did mushrooms, and like the trip itself was like fucking amazing. It was great, one of the greatest experiences in my life. But like as we were coming off of it, my buddy and I, we were like, oh, we should like smoke some weed to like mm-hmm. try and extend it. Oh no! And it, like I guess we didn't realize that it's like they're two like they they like pull in opposite directions on like you know like the drug whatever like mm-hmm. they're ones and upper ones what I don't yeah, I don't yeah. know but like some dude was explaining it to me and so like, I just like fell into this fucking black hole and like I it like literally like I remember like we were sitting there we had just smoked and we were coming off it he was talking sitting next to me on my right we were sitting on on the the patio or the like the the balcony my dad's balcony uh and like the like it just this it just went like this the whole world just went quiet. I remember just sitting there with my eyes wide open. And I, I like, I slowly turned and looked at my mm-hmm. friend and he was still talking, looking at me, talking like I saw his mouth move. Oh, no. He was dead silent, like dead silent. And then I just heard you're going to fucking die. And I was like, fucking, I started freaking out about like, like I just had like an existential crisis sure. about like dying and like all this crazy shit. I took, I tried to like force myself to go to bed. Like, I, I took like five showers. Like it was crazy. And then for like, for like two months after that, I like was like, I would have like random panic attacks and like mm-hmm. paranoia and then it like went away, which is dope. And I think it, someone was explaining to me some, some chemical in your brain, like it flooded out and you just had to wait for it to like re come back to rebalance mm-hmm. some other crap. And, uh, and, uh, then I smoked weed like two months later and it like, bam, sent me right back into it. And I was like, I'm fucking done with weed. And so like now every once in a while, like I was like at the Christmas party at the creek, I like smoked Mike's dab pen or whatever, right. and like, I was fine. But like, I haven't smoked like actual weed since. Oh uh, man, I was supposed to see Bill Burr uh, with my buddy, and we smoked out of a Gatorade bottle. We smoked like I had not smoked for like a year, and then we found like a year and a half old weed in my trunk, and so we smoked it out of a Gatorade bottle, and then we went to the show, and then. Uh, this is actually crazy because uh, it was this during COVID, and so it was on the beach. It was sea legs on the beach in Huntington Beach. There was like three hundred people there, and it was a like a nice. free show. And so like some people paid, like like a hundred people paid to be inside, sure. right? Or you could just like bring a towel and sit on the beach, like wow. outside, and then there's just the boardwalk that goes through it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Bill Burr was supposed to be there. It wasn't announced, but it was, like, alleged, like, and they got leaked or whatever, right? And so, like, this dude that I knew was producing the show, and so we went, just, like, hopped in, snuck in, uh, and then he didn't, like, he didn't show up, right? So this guy, Eddie Ift, had to, he did, like, he hadn't been on stage. He even said he hadn't been on stage in, like, over a year since before COVID started. Yeah. And the fucking guy, threw, he had, like, did, like, an hour and a half, just buying time. <laughs> just ate cock like fucking just bombed for like an hour and a half because dude it was it was we're outside it was cold as shit like it was just nobody like everybody was there to see bill and so like by like 20 minutes into this dude's set everyone's like all right where's bill at you know and then 20 minutes later everybody's like okay what the fuck's going on and then he had to go on for 40 more minutes after that just eating shit because everybody was like where's fucking bill burr right and then the dude the the producer comes out uh john johnson he comes out uh, and he's like, oh yeah, give it up for Eddie or whatever. And everybody's just like, you know, like slow clapping or whatever. And then the guy's like, he's like, now I know that a lot of you guys heard like a rumor that Bill Burr was supposed to be here tonight. Uh, and he was here, but he decided that he didn't want to perform for you fucking Huntington Beach assholes. And he starts like, like as if he's trying, he's like throwing like Bill under the bus saying that Bill said all this shit. And he starts yeah. saying all this crazy shit about like Huntington Beach. And he's like, he thinks you guys are pieces of shit, like non-ma- non-mask non wearing assholes, like blah, blah, blah. So he fucking left, right? So he's just like, and me and my buddy, uh, Dom, we like looked at each other and we were like, we got to get the fuck out of here, dude. Like it was fucking, it was so weird. And then uh, I ended up texting, uh, you know, Josh Adam Myers. Mm-hmm. Uh, he like opens for me. He's known him for like a long time. So I texted him. And I was like, "Bro, wait till you hear what this dude fucking said about Bill Bill leaving to like three hundred people." Oh no! Uh, and so then Bill ended up finding out. And I guess he talked about it on the on his podcast. I still I I don't remember the day. I never listened to it. But I guess he ranted about uh like what a like Huntington Beach and this guy. Uh, and I was like, "Oh man, I'm bummed that I missed that." But I was I was there for the fucking thing, and it was. I think it was. It turned out better than if Bill actually even showed up. And yeah. Like actually, like if he actually went up, it was just like fuck, man. But like I felt bad for like Eddie because it was just like, dude, like 
you just like slaved out there for like an hour and a half and then the dude comes out there and just like wrecks the whole shit like that i was like i'd be like dude fuck you like i don't know we were like, i haven't talked to him but like i would be like bro like 40 minutes in after realizing like this isn't going anywhere and people are just sitting here staring and now everybody's like on the beach not like building sandcastles not paying attention i'd yeah. be like i'm fucking I'm not even getting paid enough for this. I'm fucking out of here, bro. Like, yeah. There's no way that I'd go on for another 40 minutes just drowning. Like, fuck. I don't How did we even... Weed. Weed, yeah. And so that was the last time that I smoked was that show. Uh, and so, which was a great... A gr- Shit. When's the last time I smoked weed? I don't even remember. My, my, my last drug of choice was Adderall. I relapsed on and I started taking Adderall, but I was taking like 15, 30 milligrams a day. I feel like that's not that much. 15 pills. Oh, oh, yeah. I thought you said milligrams. Yeah, of 30 milligram Oh, 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 oh. I thought you said 15 to 30 milligrams a day. And I was like, that's, I was like, (laughs) you're, you're, I was like, yeah, I was like, what are you talking? Did you even make them that small? I was like, what the fuck? That was, it was a, that was a, yeah, that was a harsh time. It yeah, 15 is a lot. All right, cool. I was like, wait a second, that doesn't add up. You just <laughs> learn that all drugs are kind of the same. And they usually like, oh, meth, oh, cocaine, oh, heroin. Like, it never shot up heroin, thank God, but. You would just smoke it? An addict is an addict is an addict. Like, we just get addicted to anything. How um, would you, how would you do the heroin? Um, snort it. Snort it, damn. Mm. What is it, like, Very. happen faster or? No, no, no. I, I think using it intravenously is probably the best way to get a good high but um yeah it was i mean you actually need more to get high yeah so to if you inject it um i i guess if you snort it you need more of it i think so just sounds like you were just careless with your money i had a lot of money back then <laughs> <laughs> ironically well then and why I were you pawning your homie's shit uh the last time i got caught here's the story Okay. with that so yeah i was i was house sitting for my al-anon sponsor um who her and i were friends what? with my al-anon so like you know uh, there's aa alcoholics anonymous and then there's people who are codependent of the alcoholic okay and those are al-anon people okay cool so she was my al-anon sponsor um and i i was like the la- the tail end of my my last spree um I had my kids and I, I was like, I'll, what I'll do is I'll just pawn this stuff and I'll go back and I'll get it. It'll be fine. By the time I went to go back and get it, she had already filed charges. I mean. How did she now? Um, oh, she, she filed charges home. on this. I told gone? her. Okay, cool, cool. I, so she went to like, uh, I, she I did know. a trip to like Netherlands or she went and I watched her house for like a couple of weeks. Um, and I remember telling her, I remember like saying, hey, I, you know, I. I'm poor and I did this and I'm going to told her that you pawned her shit. Yeah. What the fuck? Well, I mean, I, I th- I'm kind of criminal. I'm you? not a good one. That's <laughs> hey, by the way, I'm I the st- kind of criminal who will tell the truth every time I stole yeah. your shit. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? I don't know why when you first said the especially, I mean, I used my driver's license. It wasn't like I was trying to. Yeah, but it's not like she would know what pawn shop you went to. Would you? Well, I wanted to get it. I wanted to get it back and give and get. You know, it's like I'll right. just it's for quick money, and I didn't even do drugs that time. What'd you do with the money? Spent it all on my kids when they came to visit me. Oh uh, well, then that's all right. Unless it was like it still is fucked up. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I know it's still fucked up, but it's like it's, I used be... to do heinous shit for heroin, though. Like what? Like burglaries. What, like you just like rob people of their heroin, or you would, I would like rob people of their their shit in their homes, and then pawn it, <laughs> and then pawn it. That's crazy. Yeah. Did you have to, did, did, like do you go to the same pawn shop? Do they know you was like crazy yeah. rage or something? <laughs> how the this fuck are you coming in with their kids in the McDonald's toys again, ladies and gentlemen? And how are you coming in here with a TV you know who, every you day? Know who turned on? Who who turned me in when the first time I ever got arrested was my ex husband? Wait, was was he ex at the time? No, he, he was your he current. Be, he was your current husband. He turned you in. It, we were separated. We were. We were I mean, he was. <laughs> there was physically abuse. There's physical abuse. There was. It, there were drugs and alcohol. We were young. We didn't love each other. You know. Yeah. That's that's the main they, one. They went to the him and one, they huh? said, "Look, look." So it was. It was all in Kingwood, where I'm from. The small the, where it says suburb in, in Houston. Where I'm. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I guess where this happened would be a good context. My bad. So like. I mean, I, I remember taking some DVDs and like, uh, what are they called? Anyway, not not like Vicodins. I'll say Vicodins. Like 15 Vicodins from a friend of mine. And he wound up turning me in. Like all my friends wound up turning me in. 
They're like, maybe she doesn't have a drug problem. Maybe she's just an asshole. And I'm huh. thinking, I have a drug problem. Now they kind of look at me and they're like, we're sorry. Like, I'm friends with them. I've made amends with them. You're supposed to do that in recovery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They kind of look at me and they're like, we, like, you could tell they f- I'm sorry, but you turn your friend in, then that's insane to me. Like, but- I, I, I'm no snitch. I, I, like, I was just saying that, like, if we were, like, walking down the street and I watched my homie, like, stab a guy, I'd be like, all right, where are we going to go eat? Right. I'm not going to fucking know. I didn't, I didn't see nothing, I bro. I grew up with privileged pieces of shit. Really? <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Hell no. Yeah. I'll never snitch. Yeah. Unless yeah, there's so something in it for me. They So he, this guy, his name's Mark. I won't give his last name, but he wound up <laughs> okay. he pressing charges against me. He was pressing charges against me. Because you were stealing from him? Because I took two DVDs and 15 Vicodin from his house. Yeah. Well, what DVDs were they? You know what I mean? Pro- who knows? I thought I could get money for them, like two bucks each. I was high. So Just saying, high. goodwill hunting. I'd press Probably. charges too. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Such a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> I love Elliot Smith. Anyway, um, and so he... And so I think the police got involved, right? And they went to my ex-husband. Like, we've heard that you beat your wife up, so we won't get you in trouble. But you better tell us if she, where she's pawned this stuff. So he took him to my house, our house that we lived in, because he'd already moved out. We'd oh, been yeah. separated, and showed him the pawn tickets. And they wound up like jumping in a white van when I was giving my kids to him. Who jumped out of a white van? Let police. Damn, and yeah. they grabbed you? And they grabbed me in front of my kids, yeah. And then he How served me divorce in the in the in Harris County. They were babies. They were like two and four. Ah, lame. This so lame. I look lame. back and I'm like, you are such a fucking Now he and I like he hangs out with my dad. He's this great guy, great dad. I I, I love the father of my kids. I would never they actually don't. My kids, if they listen to this, would be the first time they heard not first It'd time. Be the first I've, time they heard my voice in There's 10 another years. podcast <laughs> that I yeah. If you're out there, I love you. <laughs> Get a job. Mom needs some money. Right now. I fucking love my kids so much. Yeah. Um, no, there's another podcast I've shared about. I've, I share about it. I do, I've never sat down with my kids and been like, so, you know, your dad used to beat me up. I've never done that. I just, that's to me like a little over the top until they're old enough to understand. And like, 17, and 16 is old enough. And he's not, driving around. No, he's kidding. old enough to like crash a car. He's old enough to know. I just don't want him to know their dad like that until they're out of the house. <laughs> oh, 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 they still live with them? Well, yeah. What do you <laughs> oh, well, I, pff, I don't know. You were talking, but you were like, I love my kids. They're so independent. They're already on their own. <laughs> no, no, like, no, oh, no, they're not. They're still in high school. At 14. No, <laughs> yeah. Shit. <laughs> They invest in that stock market, that Bitcoin, <laughs> yeah, you know? Bro. No. You're going to hit up your kids for some investment tips. No like, shit. Like, <laughs> They're good kids. My mom was just texting me yesterday or last night. The boys came over and they helped get all the Christmas decorations down for Papa and I. They're just good kids. They're really good kids. Well, she probably floated them a 20. Of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you have my brother's kids. I won't get into that anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, no, I remember... I remember... Uh, like getting like my stepdad would like wake me up at like four in the morning to like go pick up my mom from like the bar or like go get four her out of jail or like go. Uh, it was weird. It was funny because it was like my mom and I talked about it a little bit too because it was just like it's one of those things where it's like it's like they got divorced and so she feels like he was only doing that stuff as like like a precursor. Like it's like a like a like a setup almost in case like it needed to come up in court or something because it's like why else would you be like waking me up bro like just fucking go get her They're like well, yeah. I'm, I'm sleeping bro like why are you waking me up to like go go get my mom from a fucking bar bro like uh so I think it was like I don't know she thinks it was like manipulation to like set up like in case I needed to like I don't know come out and say something in court which ended up being that during the divorce proceedings or whatever uh that uh me and my brother weren't even like allowed to be there. Which is dope. Like, I didn't even know it was right. like really no, going on. Really, uh, like, I was just you know I would just go to school and get picked up like normal. Like, was, Why did they get a divorce? Ah, uh, you know, they fell out of love or whatever. I don't know. It was just crazy shit. And I feel like uh, I don't even know if my mom uh, ever really loved him. Mm-hmm. It was one of those things where she was just a single mom uh, doing whatever she could, and there's this you know dude who made money, and uh, I don't know. I feel like maybe. In a way, she just, you know, did what she needed to do to, you know, support my future and, you know, put food on the table and whatever. And if that, you know, meant marrying some guy, it meant marrying some guy. <laughs> but uh, and it, that's just a theory. I don't know. I've never, f- like, blatantly asked her about it. Um, and she's, I should. she's sober now, huh? Yeah. She's been sober since the divorce. So, 09. Uh, so, it's got to be, like, fucking 
I suck ass at math. It would be 2010 to 2020, so 13 years, mm-hmm. um, which is dope. Um, and I remember, uh, I think what, I think the thing that's like craziest among like you know going like picking your mom up from like jail or whatever is uh, I remember watching her get into this fight with like this repo lady. Uh, and <laughs> it was it wasn't even like over our car or nothing. It was uh, my cousin. Uh, my cousin was like living with us because she was like going through some shit with like her dad. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so like she was like you know sleeping on our couch or like sleeping in our spare room, whatever. Uh, that you know. Um, that eventually my mom ended up like renting out to like various dudes from like AA. So like there's like different dudes like, uh, so she would like, you know, rent the room out so that we could help pay rent and shit. Uh, And there was only one of those dudes that ended up being cool. Uh, The rest of them were just like fucking like dickhead douchebags, like fucking, you know, freshly recovered or whatever. Yeah. Um, And, uh, and she got my cousin, like got her car towed or something. And so, she like didn't know like she i think she was like shit i had to be like 12 or 13 i had mm-hmm. to be like tw- i had to be like 12 or 13 uh and uh so she had to be she just turned i think 30 so she had to be like 17 right so she didn't know what to do she's like my car got towed like i don't know what to do right and so like my mom uh took me her and my middle brother this was so long ago that like he was still in a car seat uh, and we were at the the place, right? And so, like, me and my brother just sitting in the car mm-hmm. uh, as they go and, you know, do whatever the fuck you got to do to, like, spring your car out of the fucking repo yard. Yeah. And my mom comes back out, and she's, like, heated, right? Because my mom, like, she, like, like, back then, she would get angry. Like, she could get, like, real mad real quick. Uh, and uh, I remember she came out, and she started, like, we were just, like, sitting there. So she, like, puts my brother back in his seat or whatever to, like, and starts, like, buckling him up. And then son, she's just, like, saying shit under her breath. And I was like, oh, man, like, mom's mad. Better not, you know, just yeah. say something stupid. Like, you know, yeah. like, get, like, smacked in the car or something. And uh, uh, then this fucking lady, like, comes out of the office, like, all hot, right? And then, like, pushes my mom while she's, like, there. And they just start fucking full-blown, like, throwing down. And my mom fucking beats this bitch up. And, like, this dude comes out. And he's, like, straight out, like, you ever seen, like, those repo shows? This dude is a fucking mountain. This Or I was just small. Like, he was probably <laughs> he was probably actually, like, six foot. Like, but to me back then, to me now, it's, it'd be different. But, like, back then, I was like, this guy's fucking huge. <laughs> yeah. And we had, like, I remember we had, like, baseball bats in the trunk. And so I was thinking about, like, popping the trunk and, like, trying to like beat this fucking mountain up with a baseball bat but <laughs> in reality if i had like done that the guy probably would have just caught it and just fucking yeah. like push me to the ground or something like get out of your kid like what are you doing you're gonna <laughs> so hit me with the bat detain your mom get her yeah down? he grabbed him like this dude okay he was probably bigger than six foot because i remember he grabbed them both and like was able to hold them both like separately Damn. and uh and then like the cop showed up uh and yeah, my mom only had a scratch. She had a scratch like across her chest. The other chick got like beat up, and like it was crazy. There was one of those where the cops were like, they're like, well, because there's the the neighboring business was like a public storage, so mm-hmm. they had cameras, and so the guy like watched the camera or whatever, and was like, well, the lady, he's like, I don't know what went on inside, but the lady shouldn't have come up to my mom while she was like like in the car. But then Not at all. also my mom shouldn't couldn't have like I guess she like swung first like or so like it was like either we could press charges on both you guys or you guys could just get fucking like fuck off. And yeah. The, and so like they were just like, all right, well, yeah, we'll fuck off. We'll, we'll fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> but I was, what does I'll, your mom do for a living? Um, She doesn't have a job anymore. She uh, she. When I was so she worked until um. Oh, nine. I don't even know what her title was. She worked at the same college that uh, my dad worked at, but she worked in like a different department. Um, it's actually been so long. I don't even remember, but I do remember uh, hearing in like all the like the this bitch in the office and stuff like that. Like, you know, uh, she's like my, retired my now bitch or? boss. No. So she has she's raising uh, she's like a stay at home mom. She's got a I have another brother now who's uh, who just turned five he just turned five yeah um no it's crazy me and my mom Damn, that's we didn't 20 years apart yeah 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 so wow. she had how she, old was she when she had this baby uh, i think she just turned 43 um so like 38 yeah it's like 38 uh somewhere in there yeah because she had me in 96 and she was 20 or 19 she was 19 or 20 
um, she's she's actually kind of a legend. All right, she's had a she's had a baby in the last three decades. Uh, <laughs> me in the nineties, my brother in the O's, and then this guy in the tens. I was telling her, I was like, you should just <clears> like. <throat> Try for another one, just to, like get the four straight decades. That's that'd right. Be so cr- that'd be like a get it. That's or I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's people with crazier ones, but like yeah, four straight decades, three straight decades is pretty crazy. That is pretty crazy. It. Um, but no, there was a time where like from 2015 to the end of 2016, so it was almost two years where w- we were not talking. Uh, it was uh, you know, we were just fighting all the time, and like I was just like I was so over. Uh, everything and you know I was just like this is not healthy for like me so I ended up going and living with my my dad like full time and like I didn't I didn't say a word or see her or even reply to a text for like two years Whoa. and then my grandma and I are super close my grandma's young as fuck my grandma is younger than my stepdad whoa yeah and so, but we'll, we, we like hang out all the time and I would take her to like concerts and shit and so this was October October 13th, 2016, uh, me and my grandma, I was taking her to go see Ice Cube and Snoop Dogg. Uh, we were going to go to this concert, and so she swings by, uh, picks me up, and we're going to the concert in Irvine. And uh, she was like, oh, hey, your mom just had this baby uh, at the hospital, like, down the street. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go say hi, I'm going to go visit Uh and like she was, she told me she she was like, you could either be a fucking bitch and sit in the car, or you could come in with me. And I was <laughs> like, fuck. All right. So I was like, all right. So I was like, fucking. I'll, I'll guess I'll go. But I I didn't say anything. I remember I'll, we pulled up to the parking spot and I didn't like unbuckle my seatbelt yet. It had been like two years. I was like, now there's like, I thought we were just gonna go have a good time at this concert. And now I'm like thinking about like, oh <laughs> shit, like this new is brother. Yeah, and like or my mom for the first time in two years, and then um. Uh, she was like, so are you going to be a fucking bitch? And I was, I was just like, fucking, I didn't say anything. I just unbuckled my seatbelt, opened the door. And, you know, we didn't, it was one of those, like, we didn't need to say anything. Like she knew that she got me. I was like, I'm, yeah. I'm no fucking bitch, man. <laughs> like, I'm not, like, I'm not. And so like we went and like the way her room was in the hospital, mm-hmm. it was like the door was here. And, you know, there's like two beds and like the mm-hmm. room. So there's just the curtain. My mom had the, the bed that was, there was no, also nobody else on the other room. Uh, the other side of the room but she had the bed that was closest to the wall with the door and so the curtain went like around so you couldn't see i couldn't see the bed or nothing and she couldn't see the door yeah and so my grandma walks in comes around the corner and i just hear my mom go oh shit like this like oh Oh, no like because she didn't know she was coming right she was the first person to visit the kid was born that day that the concert was uh and uh i think you could say ice cube brought our family back together that's (laughs) right (laughs) thank you ice cube (laughs) And I just was, I just was just standing in the hallway, and my my grandma was like, "Oh, like I have a surprise for you," and I remember just like thinking, like I don't remember her walking in with a bag, so I was like, "I guess it's me." Yeah, so I, yeah. I just walked in, and like my mom just immediately just like burst into tears, like like instantly, and like I remember the dad like was sitting on the bed <clears throat> or whatever, and he like stood Awkward. up because he wasn't sure like if it was like. If we had to like fight or something, like he wasn't sure like what was going on, and then like very quickly he realized that it was like a like a like a make amends like like type of thing, and uh, yeah, and so then ever since then we've been super close. We talk every day, like it's a uh, it's been great, but like yes, yeah, so that little kid fucking like brought us back together, which is super dope. Yeah, uh, but he's like the sweetest little kid, a uh, little man. His name's Kyle, the cutest little kid ever, uh, and it's it's cool, but. It's crazy. It's crazy just Wild. like having all those kids and shit. But no, so sh- so he works and then she just stays at home with like the kid. He's got like mild autism, but it's like it's so mild that it's like like What is n- mild autism? Like it's it, like it's they're like so he <clears throat> he didn't start talking until he was like 3. Yeah. So he's like behind. So it's like he doesn't have they're like he doesn't have autism, but like uh he's just like I don't know. They're like basically uh, I think my mom filed. They were like, "Yeah, he's got autism," just so she could get like funding from the state. Nice. <laughs> so I'm gonna start like, filing at everybody. Yeah, she's like, "Yeah, he's got family. he's got autism," just so they could get like money from Thomas, the state. Thomas, you have autism now, honey. <laughs> yeah, now he's like all old as shit now. Yeah, so uh, so he doesn't have autism. He's just got like legal autism, oh my really. God. Like, so yeah, no, like she gets, but she also has rheumatoid arthritis or whatever. That's big. So she's been getting money. So it makes okay, yeah. So she doesn't like work. She just gets paid. Nice. Which is dope. Yeah. That's cool. 
So do you did you go to college? Yeah, uh, I went to first. I went to OCC Orange Coast College, mm-hmm. and then uh, Long Beach State. I went to I went D one for running. Yeah, and then I I pretty much I didn't go to school to go to school. I went to school to like compete and like run for the have team. Fun. Uh, no, not have fun really. I didn't even have fun because I was going to practice at six a.m. and then yeah, yeah, yeah. two p.m. and then fucking nine p.m. and your scholarship then. Yeah, but it went it went I I retired like mid season too. I I actually only ran one career race for Long Beach State before I was like, well, because I it was I just lost the love for the because in, in um. My team in high school, we were really good, mm-hmm. and it was we built it up together, and mm-hmm. like we all developed together. So when we all peaked at the same time, and fucking like won like four straight championships, like it was like like a brotherhood. We're all still friends. Like it's like something. Like, it was actually like an entirely crazier story that's been told throughout in parts throughout the podcast. Uh, but and then I went to OCC, and one of those dudes came with me, and I'm still friends with him. We've been friends for like 13 years, and. Um, it's it was totally different because now it's a team of dudes where we were now like Orange Coast College was the community college, a two year school uh, in Orange County. So all the dudes that we would compete against, mm-hmm. the best of those dudes came with us there. And uh, I led us to state two years in a row. And so the, which was, you know, great for other schools looking to like give scholarships and shit. Yeah. Uh, and then that was dope because it was all these dudes that I had been racing against for four years and competing against and like having rivalries with now we're teammates and now we're friends and now we're running together. So that was great. Mm -hmm. And then I go to Long Beach state where it's a four year school people. There's the dude on the team from like Wisconsin. There's a dude on the team from wherever the fuck. So it was just a very like very mixed match, like, like a quilt blanket of like fucking pieces of people. And it's like, now I got to meet these people. And it's like, what I want to, I don't want to like race for you, bro. Like I hate you. Like you're like like you know. It's like we didn't. Not all of us got along. It was just that. It was just not. So I ran one race, and then after that race, going to practice on Monday, I got into a car accident, uh, like a crazy car accident, blew my knee out. Jeez. And then I just was like, "Fuck this, I quit." Yeah. And I just I retired. Uh, I just I had started comedy. Um, I started comedy like shortly after that. And then I started, that started, I stopped going to classes. And even when I would show up to classes, I would just be writing. Mm-hmm. I would leave class early because I would do night classes. I would leave early to go to open mics. Uh, and then I just kind of realized that comedy is what I'm supposed to be doing. And then I just dropped out of school yeah. with nine. I was, I was nine units away from getting my bachelor's and I dropped out. That's how it works. I was only three classes away and I was like, fucking, I'm out. Yeah. Well, technically, I should be. I was nine units away from getting it if I'd finished that semester, and I left that semester. So I guess it reverts back. So eighteen yeah, units, yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But at the time that I decided to drop out, I was right there. And then, you, when did you move to Austin? June of this year. Wow. Yeah. Uh, this was COVID? all. This was all in California. Yeah. Because of COVID, or why? Yeah. Because uh, I mean, even still in LA, like. Uh, you know, I would go up the the store, I would do the improv, all that stuff. Yeah. And it was just COVID shut all that shit down for like a year, and and even when it would come back, so like, I uh, the two days, two no, four days before I moved out here, mm-hmm. I think it was like May, like twenty six. I did the improv again, uh, and it was like, it was funny because I didn't know, so like the show sold out. Of presale, and we're nice. like, "Oh fuck yeah, dude! Like, this is gonna be fucking dope." Uh, we do the show. Come to find out that it was like twenty five percent capacity. Everybody's like spread out, oh, no. and so it was just like, and that that venue, the Irvine Improv, holds like five hundred people or, or four fifty. The Brea Improv holds six hundred. Four fifty at the Irvine Improv, and so twenty five percent of that, you know, it was still a hundred people, but they're all spread out through this big ass fucking venue and it was yeah. just like, uh, you I mean, it was still. I'm not complaining. It was fucking dope, but I was like, it just kind of reassured me moving because like i decided to move out here in a while mike's out here uh mike and i have been doing comedy together for like forever i love mike um and then cj landry moved out here and i knew him from out there so you play you plan on staying or going back i bet you miss i don't know what i plan on doing really i know that i'm going to be here for the next year and a half wow uh, cause we're going to re-up our lease <clears throat> uh, so i'll be here for the next year and a half and then if stuff goes 
you know, pretty much back to normal. I'm not going to move back to Orange County. I would mm-hmm. move to L.A. because I would yeah. I would I was in Orange County, which is 30 minutes, 35, 40 minutes away from L.A. So I'd be doing all this shit in L.A. and Orange County. But I also can't be that dude that just like moves back to Orange County. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just like it's like I already moved. I already moved away. You know, I'm not going to go back. Okay. So I'm either going to go to L.A. or New York. Wow. That's it. It's or I mean, I don't I don't see myself staying here like permanently mm-hmm. or whatever. This is definitely just a middle ground while I what just about kinda... I've heard a lot of Joe Rogan's opening. A... Whatever, dude. Yeah. That's what, I just, what am I going to get fucking past there? No. You know, it's it's I mean, I if the cards fall right, I'm funny enough. But it's yeah. like it's not like one of those things where I'm like, I have to have that or I'm fucking a failure. Like some people like put the, all their eggs in one basket and it's like this shit's such a such a marathon you just gotta like really is. count your little w's along the way you yeah. know and don't think too much about the little l's you know the no's along the way fuck it like whatever yeah and uh so it's you know who are some of the funniest comedians that you've come across here in in texas oh um i would say austin but i don't want to um i'm very it's funny because it's You're like me <laughs> no i'm very oh yeah i'm very funny <laughs> I'm very funny, so no, it's it's one of those things. Well, I thought like, all of all the guys that I saw at the gun show last year in yeah. July, I was like, okay, Galen's funny. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. That AA joke about my mom—that was the longest laugh break it's ever gotten at that show. Yeah, that was that was four days into being here. That was wow. that was the first show okay. I did out here. Wow, um, and yeah, it was twenty twenty seven seconds. Of a laugh break, and I I remember talking about it on the podcast because I I remember the feeling still, like like at first like for the first ten seconds I was like oh this is fucking awesome like this fucking you know that's my best joke so like I knew that it was gonna fucking hit whenever some, a set starts going south I'll throw that joke out there just to fucking like bring it, bring back. it back and then yeah. if it doesn't hit then it's like I just give up on the set <laughs> I'm like you guys this is whatever now I'll just try new shit or yeah, like yeah, what, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. I'm like yeah. I'm not I'm not gonna bring out any like good more shit I'll just try some shit with you guys yeah. Uh, but then for the first 10 seconds, I was like, oh man, this is fucking like amazing. For the next 10 seconds, I was like, all right, dude, what the fuck is wrong with these people? And then for the last seven seconds, I got felt like the biggest asshole because I was just standing there. I was like, now I started getting, I started like getting self-conscious like on stage. I was like, this is like, like, I was like, what am I doing with my hand? There was just too much time for me to be in my own head. And, yeah. Like think I was like, what's, what am I doing with my hand? Uh, my hair probably looks stupid. My hat probably is like crooked. Like I'm fucking Maybe my flies down. That's why they're laughing. Like it was just fucking. I felt so oh, stupid because it was just too long. Like twenty seven seconds is a long time. Like, it was just. I was like, I felt like an asshole, like up there, and then like it just kept going. But that set was, that set was like had to be like top ten for me. Like that was that was crazy. It was good. But um, yeah, I'm very. It's funny because like people have talked about it on podcasts of like how much I don't like, like I, I, or not not that I don't like people of how much I don't think other people are funny, mm-hmm. uh, and so that when uh you hear like and my laugh is very loud and distinct and mm-hmm. so like it's funny because like my buddy dom uh who i've been doing comedy with forever and like so like oh dom's gonna be featuring me for me he features for me on the road whenever i go on the road and so it's uh it's really cool but like he like listens for my laugh and he'll be like he doesn't he says that it doesn't matter if the joke didn't get a laugh but if you heard my laugh he's yeah. like it, that's what matters most yeah and like you could hear it over the crowd and it's the same thing with Brandon. He says the same thing. He's like, if I hear your laugh, I know that like I'm doing it's something funny. right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, it's like, I'm fucking like, that's <clears throat> stupid. That's hacky. That's whatever. But funniest dudes I've met out here so far. I mean, I knew Tony Casillas before yeah. and I knew CJ Landry before. But I mean, of dudes that I've met out here, Adam, Adam Lucky is pretty funny. I don't even know him really. Uh, we're friends on Facebook and I, I booked him to do one of my shows and then it got postponed. Uh, but that dude's really funny. Mm-hmm. Um, fuck. Oh, I mean, Asan's from L.A. Derek's from L.A. Like a lot of these people aren't from here. So like, yeah. like um, who would I say that I've like just been like, man, I'd have to like. It's really hard to say. I'd have to like look at because I don't know. Uh, Colin O'Mara is pretty funny. I met him out here, but he's from Philly. That mm-hmm. dude's pretty funny. Uh, I think he's pretty new into doing stand up still, so he's still like like finding a voice and all that stuff. But like that dude is very funny. Uh, oh, there I know it. Andrew Murphy. 
Andrew Murphy. Andrew Murphy. He's been doing he's been doing stand up out here like in Austin and in Texas for like mm-hmm. ten years. So like he's from here. Uh he's like one of the OGs of the scene. Uh I should bring him out to Houston. You should. The dude's yeah. fucking hilarious. Adam will be on my next show. Adam Lucky? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk to you like off top. You you gotta know that your flyers are pretty bad, right? Oh, you hate them? No, 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 I don't hate them. I think they're hilarious, but like you gotta know that they're like like aesthetically and like are are you in the bad comedy flyer page on Facebook? <laughs> no. No way. You're not? No. Oh man, that fl- so Which one? Oh, the one that Antonio did? That one, yeah, so he put that he one did in. A sh- yeah, I was like, what are you doing? That one blew up in that group. It was the most likes I've ever seen on a on a on a post in that group. There's I think there's like a few thousand comics in this group and like whenever someone sees like a bad flyer yeah. posted online, they'll put it in this group and oh, everyone really? will like but it's it's like it's all for fun and like but like it's also pretty interesting cuz sometimes people will like if like I think it's fucking it's I think it's hilarious. Every time like I show up in that group, yeah. I fucking die laughing or especially when I see someone that I know yeah. like show up on that group I'm like you fucking loser you know like it's, yeah. but it's all it's all for fun but then there's people that get like fucking mad and like or like they'll get like offended that like their shit like I, I spent a lot of time on this flyer blah, blah, blah. I have people do my flyers for there's a, it's he's, he's a guy who works at the Manil uh, in in uh, Houston and he's an actual artist oh, no. but then I know some Antonio was the last one he, that one was fucking funny. It was, is that the one that got put up in the horrible flyers? Well, that one got put up, but also the one that you put up got put up in that group too. <laughs> Which one is that? The original one. The one, I think it was gray. It was, it was gray. gray. But like, that one was funny because like it took me like it took me like 30, 45 seconds to actually find me on the flyer. Oh, like, yeah. it, actually, it, got, it, it took me so long to find it where I was like, I guess Rachel just took me off the show because <laughs> I couldn't find myself. On the oh, flyer. no, I need to tell my friend. What are you doing, man? I don't uh, know. It's, I, oh, I, no, I, I, like I, thought, his, I like his work. I was asking you because I thought you were doing it on purpose. I thought it was like ironically bad. Like, which would be hilarious. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't realize that it was like, now I feel bad talking shit on the guy. Oh, I don't, I mean, I, I'm not going to say his name now, but I'll, uh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> that is funny. Because each one is I'm just like. I'm trying to think of which one was put up that. It was like the, the most recent one, not the one that's coming up. Not the one, the one that's coming up, the flyer is pretty cool, actually, like. But I know which one I think you're talking about. It would have to be on Look But Don't Touch Comedy. Yeah. Yeah, Antonio just kept... Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, this one? Yes, that one. Terrible. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. The font's all... Like, you can't even see the people or the names. Or, like, it was oh, so bad. You, oh, you guys are crazy. That's funny. Yeah, so That's it got funny. put in that group, but... All of it, too, is from designs from, like, like actual artists, too. Like, he, he takes his stuff and creates it from, like, Apple. Actual graphics and artists from the Manil. Yeah, see, we we don't know that. Yeah, we just think that someone was like trying to like get funny. I thought it was funny. That one, that one was over the top. Like this uh, one here, this is cool to me. Like the little. That's cool, right? Yeah. That's not that, but the one the where new one, cool. I I do like this one because you know I'm in the middle. <laughs> 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 but that one was was over the top. Yeah, I it was over the top. But uh, for people listening, you're not being able to see the stuff. If you want to see these bad flyers, sorry, uh, go to Look But Don't Touch Comedy uh, on Instagram and then go to a show if you're in Houston. I know there's a percentage of you guys that listen, so go to a show. Yeah. Um, but um, it's not even that that flyer and the one that Antonio did. W- they're not even the worst ones I've ever I've ever been on. There was uh, I was headlining this show in Fresno and this dude, it was the worst flyer of all time. Yeah. All time, like it got it got posted in that group, mm-hmm. uh, and it was really fucking funny because the purple the people who the person who posted it didn't post just the flyer, mm-hmm. they posted uh, the dude that posted its the caption with the flyer like on Facebook, yeah. like the producer of the show. <laughs> Uh, I love this guy. I love Smiley. He's probably so tired of me talking shit on on this goddamn thing. But like, it was the gig. It, it was the whole thing was just wild. Uh, and. The caption was the official flyer of the, you know, Galen Ash coming to Fresno or whatever, because I had sent, he had sent me the flyer, like, you know, like a couple weeks prior. And I was like, fuck that. And I, <laughs> I hit up my buddy who like does design for like, like a bunch of other shit. Yeah. Uh, like for like 
like bigger shit and i was like hey man can you do me a favor and so he designed like this like this dope flyer yeah like uh and like made us look fucking like it was fucking sick uh i actually have it printed out and signed i had everybody or i had my the the dude who opened for me and then brandon or the dom featured for me brandon opened for Mm -hmm. me and i had all of us signed it and it's on my wall and they each have a copy because it was fucking dope uh and the show was just memorable as fuck it was crazy but then so he posted and he said the official flyer (laughs) because he saw like the the, i posted up the thing so he said the official flyer and everybody there was like 30 comments on this post people were like the so did the comics go and make their own or whatever and so i was just like having fun replying to these people like just being like (laughs) Yeah, like we fucking did, because it was so. I'll show you a picture of it after yeah, we're done. Yeah. Uh, it was just so. So it's important for comics; they want their faces to be seen and their names to be seen. I don't give a shit about. I don't really give a fuck about that. It's yeah. the same thing when uh, people ask me, like, "What do you want? You want? What do you, what do you want me to say about you when I bring you on stage?" Just <laughs> say my name, dude. Like, I don't. That's it. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't need credits or nothing. I think it's actually like, like when I used to produce shows and like, or I guess I still do a monthly out here, but like, like back then, and somebody like uh, I used to produce. This weekly bar show in mm-hmm. Manhattan Beach, which was I the craziest Manhattan thing. Beach. Manhattan Beach is awesome. I was there last year. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, it's also cool because there was a, it's crazy, like learning from people and seeing different people because there was this guy, his name's Logan Hendry. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a comic out of like Indiana. Mm-hmm. Super funny guy. Uh, and he was like, he hit me up. He's like, hey, I'm going to be like in town. I saw, I know that you run this show, this weekly. Like, is it cool if like I could do some time? And I was like, fuck yeah, dude. Like, come on down. Like, the, the show wasn't that serious. Like, I didn't even, like, we didn't even really promote it. It was one of those where like it was just weekly. So whoever was in the bar, you got a show. Nice. Was, but then people, you know, we did it for like a year and a half. So people started showing up for the show because like you were doing it for so long, weekly, every, every Wednesday. And like, it was really funny. It was crazy. Uh, random celebrities would be there like it was it was yeah but like it was because the bar was like a shithole bar and so like like these celebrities would show up like looking for like a low-key night where like nobody would like fucking bother him because there's there'd be nobody there yeah uh and they would just be there it was fucking sick and then uh there was dudes getting like a dude got a blowjob like in the fucking cr- like it, th- in the th- crowd sh- yeah it was it was crazy but it wasn't in the crowd it was on the patio but there was this window where you could see out, but you can't see in. Yeah. And it was just right there on the other side of the window. Some dude was just on stage. It was it was wild. I miss it. There's so many yeah, crazy yeah. things. I miss it. Summer's Bar. Uh, anybody that had a, the privilege of doing that show, like they talk about it all the time. Like, dude, that it was fucking so much fun. It was even though most of the shows were garbage. Yeah. Something wild would happen. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but this dude Logan's like, can I like come to a spot? And I was like, yeah, dude, of course. And uh, he hits me up. The show is at like eight or nine p.m. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he hits me up at like five, and he was like, "Dude, I'm I'm already here." And I was like, "What are you talking about, bro? Like the sun? Like I'm st- I hadn't even like left. Like I wasn't gonna leave for another like three hours." And he was like, "Dude, I'm I'm like I'm already here." And I was like, "Why?" And he was like, "Dude, I've never seen the beach before." And I was like, "What?" And he was like, "I've never seen the ocean." And I was oh, like, "That's." Wow. And he was like, "You know." 35 year old comic been doing it forever and i was like what do you mean you never seen the fucking ocean bro like, <laughs> which is really cool and so like uh like getting to meet people through that is cool but um uh, fuck there was a, a there was a reason oh, bad comedy flyers flyers fucking... yeah oh man oh yeah, yeah yeah i was saying that's always cringe so like that like now that i've based i've prefaced what if like a like a, a C list show that was? It was also yeah. like I would get you know like Tim Dillon headline, Trevor Wallace headline. Like I would get all these dudes because it was like so close to L A. Yeah, and I'd be like, I'd fucking you know throw them thirty bucks. Be like, hey, come headline. How many just, comics a show would you? Like seven. Yeah, and then the headliner. It was a bar show. Some people with my show in Houston have that. Like, oh, you have like twelve comics. I'm like, I have people who either you know don't get seen a lot or or who you know who do get a lot of time it doesn't matter to me like i feel like i feel like everybody deserves a shot especially in houston we don't really have a lot of sh- like shows we have right two, yeah two clubs so i try to put people out there that want that that want it you know? right yeah oh yeah but uh like i would <laughs> get like crazy headliners come down to do this garbage That's ass awesome. show cause just on the premise of like look no like this show doesn't matter if you want to come down here and run 30 minutes of just brand new fucking material that like you know like you wouldn't like go to the comedy store and run this shit like come here and run this shit here and like they would fucking be like fuck yeah let me come down and do that which was fucking awesome right Neat. 
And so, but like, it was always cringy as fuck when like some dude would be like one of the seven dudes or whatever. And he'd like come up or she would come up and be like, Hey, can you say that I've been on like this or like whatever? I'm like, fucking no, I'm not going to like, what do you, but no, I'm not going to fucking. And it was also funny. Cause like I would make, uh, I, I started that show mm -hmm. with this female comic. Her name was Kelly Jean Brown. Uh, super cool. Uh, super cool girl. Uh, and it got to the point where like, like, like a year in, she started like missing shows and like, like, you know, like I, one time I saw she missed a show for like a party or something. And I was like, all right, well, we're our like, I, I saw, I felt that our drive wasn't anywhere like near where it needed to be for like me to continue running it with her. So I was like, I'm going to just take over. Yeah. And then I brought in my buddy Dom, uh, who goes on with me on the road and shit. And I brought him in to like help me produce it. And then, but I've been doing it for like a year. So I was so over it that I was like, I would go up there and I would eat the bullet every time. And I would just go up there and tell like one or two new jokes that I wrote that day. Mm -hmm. And then like sometimes they would work and then oftentimes they would just like eat shit. And then I would like continue to just eat shit on purpose. And then I would just bring them up and just like bury them like that. And just bring them up cold as fuck. And these people are just staring. They have no idea that the comedy's going on. Oh, and I would no. just go up there and eat a dick on purpose. They think that like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And then he'd have to go up there and like revive the show. And it was, it was just so much fun. Uh, but like I would make him host like, pretty much all the shows because I was just so over hosting and then people would like come up and be like, can you say that I've been on like Buzzfeed or whatever? I'm like, no, I'm not going to fucking say that shit, bro. <laughs> like there's 12 people here. Like they, they, nobody here gives a fuck. Like it's, and I feel like it's the same thing. Even, yeah. even when I'm at the improv and there's like 400 people, they're like, what do you want me to say? And I'm like, just say my name, dude. Just don't get it wrong. Like that's it. Like don't fucking, like it's just, I think it's super cringy when, I mean, unless you're like, even then though, like I was going to say, unless you're like, Dave Chappelle or Joe Rogan and it matters but it's like those people are already so well known that you already know where they're fucking from yeah so it's like nobody's have you done Kill Tony I don't sign up for that why I mean I'm just curious as to someone like who's it's, experienced like you wouldn't uh, I just feel like it's like a minute and then they like it, I think it's great for like I mean some of these people that are doing it they're like you know now they're like getting like followers and shit like that which is cool but it's like I signed up for it twice out here and they have you sit in that like pig pen, like standing up for like, you know, the whole show. And it's just like, ah, I'm just, I'd rather, cause on Mondays there's three mics out here. I was like, I'd rather just go get stage time, bang, 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 work on a new joke. And I feel like getting one new joke out of my Monday is more valuable to me than just standing around in the back yeah. of a fucking venue for three hours and then for nothing. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, eh, but when it was in LA, I signed up a couple times and like that was even worse because I was in Orange County and we would the signups would be like three hours before the show. And, but luckily uh, it was the same day as potluck at the comedy store. And so we would drive, we would drive there and sign up for both mm -hmm. and then, you know, not get picked for both. Yeah. Uh, but at least there, there would, you know, be like 200 other comics there also signing up. Yeah. So it was like good for like, you know, hanging out and networking and stuff. So there, there was value that came out of going up to the store on, on Mondays yeah. and like signing up and hanging out and meeting people. But out here it's like the fucking, you know, 50 people that signed up. It's like, I'm going to see you at the mic tomorrow. <laughs> you know, it's like I fucking everybody knows each other out here yeah. for the most part. Yeah. Uh, and so it's like, yeah, I just feel like there's no there's no value unless, you know, I was like guaranteed a spot. Otherwise, yeah. to me, it's like I'm just wasting my Monday. Yeah, that's interesting. That's why. <laughs> but I'm not I'm not anti kill Tony. If someone was like, dude, like you're going to we'll rig the bucket and you're going to get up. Fuck yeah, I'd go. Fuck yeah, I'd go. Yeah. But, or like if I knew that they're, you know, there was only 20 people that were going to sign up that Monday. Fuck yeah, I'd go. My odds are better. But it's like otherwise the odds are I'm just going to waste my Monday and I'd rather go workshop a new joke. Yeah. You you sign up for it? I haven't. You haven't? Why? Um, I don't live in Austin, A. And two, um, I just haven't. I just haven't yet. I would. Are you going to sign up for tonight? Tonight's Monday, right? Tonight's Monday. No, I'm heading back to Houston. Like right after this? Yeah. Well, like this afternoon, yeah. Oh, dope. Yeah. We're just going to go get some barbecue and then fucking head out or what? <laughs> Maybe some Jimmy John's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you, uh, what's better, the barbecue in Houston or Austin? Uh, well, shit. The last barbecue. Because I, I always see, uh, dude. I, don't I would say Houston. Really? Maybe. Maybe I I'm, mean, a, I'm asking you. Be definitive. Okay. Yes. All right. In my right. opinion, yes. Okay. Uh, I always call him Alfonso because his fucking Instagram handle is like Alpaca Capone or something. Yeah. yeah. I fucking 
<laughs> I dude, I'm so bad with names. Uh, that like I'll say his I'll like I'll know his name, Antonio like I'll fucking I know his name yeah. and I'll like be talking to him and I, I'll use his name and all this stuff and then like like twenty seconds later I'll just be like Alfonso and I'm just like fucking and now I'm just like but it's Antonio and it's like I'm just so I'm so fucking bad with names it's not even funny yeah it's not like I was uh I was dude I was at this party my buddy's party this is in Orange County this was like two years ago and I showed up with my buddy. And it was this Halloween party Mm -hmm. and I just wasn't in a costume. I always, I do the same thing every year. I just wear a hoodie. And when someone asks, what are you? I just say, I'm Trayvon Martin. (laughs) (laughs) It's just the easy, the laziest costume ever. Uh, And uh, because there's always Halloween candy. So I'll just put a bag of Skittles in my pocket. I'll be like, I'm Trayvon Martin. It's it's stupid. And then uh, this dude, so like my buddy like left to like go do something. I'm just standing on the patio talking to this guy. And there's this other guy that's fucking standing right next to me, staring at me. And I was just like, oh, so like it was just one of those. So I just had to like, but he's like right next to me staring at me. Like he was clearly waiting for like me to say hi or something. So I was yeah. like, hey, like, how's it going, man? Nice to meet you. Like, I'm, my name's Galen. And he was like, I know. And I, was like, and I was like, yeah, it was aggressive. And I, I looked at my, my buddy uh, or I was looked at the guy that I was just talking to that I was also just like meeting for the first time, I think. And uh, he, we looked at each other. We were like, what the fuck? And he was like, dude, I've met you like seven times already. And I was like, oh. I mean, he 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 didn't even say his fucking name either. Like he was just like, I met you seven times already, uh, and he's like, I've been to your show twice. And I was like, oh man. I was like, oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm just like really bad with names. And I just I just walked away because yeah. like he was getting like aggressive. And then I told my buddy, like uh, my homie Amy, about it. She's like, well, who was it? And the guy had already left. And so I, now she's like showing me pictures, like group pictures of the party. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I fucking forgot what the guy looked like. I'm just so like that's how bad with names I am. But honestly, fuck that guy. Be more memorable. Like if I've met you seven times and you're not joking that it's actually been seven times, that's on you, dude. Like you're just not memorable then. Yeah, yeah. Like that's that's not my you're fault. Not that's seriously <laughs> Be though. Be more like, memorable. <laughs> that's that's not that's not my fault. But like I just it sucks. I don't know if I have like early onset Alzheimer's or something because it's just so I'm that so show bad with that names. I saw you guys at you, you read uh, Sean Rouse. Um, Brett Forte was a little over the top. Uh, like. That was a fun show for me. You guys were really funny. Yeah, that was... Like, it hit hard for me that you guys were all doing really well. Um, as far as females go, Skankfest, when I saw some girls there, but not really any Was there any locals. females on that Jessie gun shop show? Pearson. Uh No. Uh, there was one. I don't rem- I don't remember her name. Um, it's, yeah, I guess I it's really remember. hard for... It's hard for me to... Like, like you've got it. Like, you've got to be someone that really has what I want <laughs> as far as a female. For me to be like, you're just so funny. Uh, Jessica Kirsten, but she's from LA. Jessica Kirsten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she isn't she like. She's hilarious. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. She's so funny. Yeah. Um, girls here, I don't know. <sighs> yeah. Well, it's also a lot of the girls here are like so brand new. Yeah. So brand new. Uh, like in the like. It'll be like four months in or five months in, and it's just like I can't. I'm not gonna. I can't say if you're funny or not. <laughs> if you're, you're four months. You don't in. even know if you're funny or not. <laughs> yeah. Well, seriously, yeah. like it's yeah. you yeah. can't judge someone that's just starting. Yeah. Uh, but um, I can't. I don't want to come off as like a misogynist or anything, mm-hmm. but I can't. There's also not that many female comics out here in Austin, really. Mm-mm. There's not. I can only. I think I, I there can aren't only, that many in I Houston. Only, I think I can only name like five. Yeah. And it's not that I'm not paying attention. I think there's only like five. Yeah. Um, But the good thing for them is they get booked all the time. Yeah. Is there's only fucking, there's only so many to like, you know, choose from. Yeah. Um, But, and it's funny because like, um, I'm not like misogynistic or whatever, but like I do, like on the shows that I book, it's pretty much only dudes. Uh, and it, But and people will say, or like it was funny because like on the last show I did, or that I produced was at the the Easy Studio, or whatever, and we sold it out. It was crazy, mm-hmm. and we walked. I walked. I walked. I walked out. And you know, the green room was just the fucking hallway that like led to like where people would sit. Mm-hmm. And Andrew Tarr was like, "Thanks for you know bringing the diversity to this show." And like I, I look around, it's just all white dudes, and I was like, "Ah, oh, fuck!" Like I didn't, like I didn't, it's just not something that I think about. I'm not just like, oh, I'm only booking dudes, like, or I'm only booking straight white dudes He's or whatever. Booking comics. I, yeah, I'm just booking people that I think are funny, and that's what I say is that like I'm I don't book people for like the politics or like whatever. I book people because I want to laugh, bro. I'm a fucking. <laughs> 
Serious, I'm a fan of comedy. So, yeah. like, I book people that it's, like, I want to laugh that I know are fucking hilarious that's going to make me laugh. And then I'll fucking, a lot of times, like, people won't watch sets. I'll go in the back and I'll be fucking, like, dying. Like, at that show, I was fucking dying. Because yeah. it was like, dude, it's, like, my friends that I've, like, you know, been yeah. doing comedy with for a while. And, you know, they, that new joke that, I've, that they've been working on hard. Yeah. And it's fucking, it's hilarious. I'll tell you, when I did the uh, Allison Wu show on Saturday, Eaton was... Um, hosting oh yeah the yeah, I could good hear tap. him la- yeah i yeah. could hear him laughing you know when i was yeah, up, yeah, yeah. and i was like yes, yes yeah yes. yeah 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 <laughs> it's just like making eat and laugh made me really happy <laughs> that's and that's what i look for i'm like no the comics were laughing that's that's a good yeah, sign <laughs> yeah sometimes it's yeah it's it's really cool i don't know it's just such a weird game that we're in yeah and it's like right when you think you figured something out it's like something else is there it's yeah. like it's so it's like a like an it's like a everlasting puzzle which is really fucking dope and you also get to do you get to like you can get your dick sucked every night really you know i feel like i'd rather make someone laugh than you know go fuck some chick and it's dope that Amen. comedy lets me do both uh but it's like <laughs> it's just it's it's crazy that it's like you know and some nights suck asshole and you know you want to drive off a bridge on the way home yeah and happens. then the next night is fucking insanely awesome yeah and it's just like such a roller coaster marathon and it's like like i can see why people like lose themselves like on the journey like what i do every year is i just came off of it uh, i take a two-week break uh, like a mental health break. So that show, those, so I, I went up three times in Houston that night. Uh, yeah. Once at your show, twice at the secret group thing. And then I, I took two weeks off where I didn't record a podcast. I just had one backlog. So it came out. So really there's only one week gap in the podcast, like for people listening. But for comedy wise, I took a two week break where I didn't write anything down. I didn't fucking go to any mics. I didn't do any shows. I didn't decline a show either. Like it was just one of those where I try to like, like, space the bookings around this two week block where mm-hmm. I'm not doing anything comedy related I would fucking I went to work came home got drunk watched the game fucking walked my dog hung out just did nothing that anything that has nothing to do with comedy just to reset and then like by the end of it I was like fucking like I'm now I'm missing it I really like now I'm like you know my goals became clear and then I set my goals for this year mm-hmm. and then now I'm back in it like it's it's yeah. one of those where I just take a, a two week break uh, every year just to kind of like reset and I'm, I'm thankful because i think in my first year the first year in comedy i i ended up doing almost like 500 sets i was like tripling every night like it was fucking yeah. like every like so yeah. like I, I advanced like very quickly like through like you know getting better uh and so like but that like it didn't burn me out but i was like i i remember after like i like i think i did like 512 sets or some crazy ass shit i was like you know i was uh unemployed I was just tripling every night, quadrupling some nights, going up to L.A. I would, you know, even on the the, the first time I did the improv, I did uh, two open mics before that, and then I was going to go to one after, and then my friends were like, yeah. stop, just come drink with us. And I was like, all right. So I, I, like, I went to two open mics before that, and I remember, you know, promoting the show and being at this open mic, like, you know, promoting the show for like a couple weeks. It was for me, like doing it was a big deal for the, you know, the first time and then going to this mic and everyone's like, aren't you supposed to be like the fucking like improv? And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, no, no, no. That's like in two hours. Like, dude, you're crazy. And it's like, yeah. fucking, I guess. And so like, but after that, I was like, I needed to take a break. And then I just started taking the break like every year. And I feel like it just kind of not only helps like reset so I don't like lose my mind, mm-hmm. but it also, I feel like makes things like clearer just a little bit. And people like, I, I know Mike doesn't take a break. I know, well, he just went on vacation with his wife or whatever. Like he takes, you know, and he takes mental health days. So like, I'll hit him up and be like, hey, what are you doing tonight? He'd be like, oh, tonight's, you know, date night with the wife, like n- nothing comedy related. Like he takes, you know, one once a week, like a like a day off type of thing. I just take it all at once because I can't do the whole, like I'm either in it and I'm grinding or I'm just, you know, all right, I can't touch it. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Do you do anything like that? I have been. Yeah. I have to check out. But when I'm in, I'm in. Um, yeah. I. It's hard to. I don't really. I haven't really taken a break since I've been doing it. No. Really? No. How long have you been doing it? Only a year. Only a year? Yeah. Oh, shit. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Well, that makes sense then. Yeah. What, are, like, you gonna, are you going to take a break, break six mean? months in? Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, I want more. <laughs> down the line invest they definitely invest in like your mental health yeah you see so many comics like killing themselves and shit and it's just like pfft. like uh, i think daniel tosh referred to like life on the road as like groundhog's day 
Yeah. It's just like like the movie, just like, you know, same fucking like wake up, do the same shit, rinse, repeat. And especially for like like those dudes that have been doing it for like thirty years and you know, they're fucking like uh fuck, who was it? Damn, I can't remember who it was, but he said that he would like wake he would like, you know, go on the road, you know, be fucking wasted, continue drinking through the night doing drugs, wake up at like two PM and then start drinking again, do another show, and just like he would be drinking, and there's just a giant cycle yeah. of just trashing his body for yeah. years. Yeah, and it's just like, no, dude, like I need to take like a during that two week break. I also didn't drink. Like I didn't, I didn't drink for See, the two week break. It helps that I'm sober too. So it's, yeah, so it's like you know, two week break from like everything. Also, uh, Brandon and his girlfriend they were in California, mm-hmm. uh, so it just worked out. But it was just like me mm-hmm. being able to like figure stuff out like mentally set goals of like what I want to do and just like not kill myself really. Yeah. Not that I'm depressed. It's not like I'm, it's not like I need to take a mental break because I'm on the verge of suicide. It was just one of those things where it's like, like a precaution type of thing. I don't yeah. want to like, yeah. cause there's, there's nights where, you know, you like, like eat a cock or something or like, you know, and it's just like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck is that? Like I suck ass. Like I got to fucking kill myself. Like it's one of those where like then on the drive home, like, because I, I record all my sets, I'll listen to the tape from the, where I just sucked ass, you know, figure out where I went wrong or whatever, and then I'll go back to a tape where I killed. Because in my notebook, I don't, I don't have it out here, but in my notebook, I have every set that I've ever done written down. And the, I leave the first, like, five pages of the notebook empty to, like, you know, I'll write the date, the, the city, the show. Uh, I'll grade myself. I'll say how long my set was, and then I'll the, in the corner I'll write like a little note about like what happened in the show, just so I can remember it. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, on the date, I'll either underline the date as like a go back and listen to this because like a, a riff was good, and I need to write it down right. or elaborate right. or uh, somehow I got a word to work different in the, like it. So I'll underline it so I can go back. But like uh, like the show, the gun shop show. I, I, I only listened back and I skipped only to the AA joke because I was like, how long was that laugh break? And I timed it out. And then after that, I've never listened to it since because it was every joke worked at its peak. It like, did. Every yeah. joke worked how it was supposed to work. There's nothing for me to learn from this. Like it yeah, was yeah. just, it just worked. But there's other shows where I'll listen back to it just as like, okay, I don't suck ass. Like this was just a one-off night. And then I'll listen. That's so all. I'll, <laughs> right. I'll listen to the shitty tape. And then I'll listen to the good tape, and then I'll listen to the shitty tape again, so I can diagnose what went wrong, what I did wrong, and then most of the time it's something simple, like I fucking I left out the word the, so they don't know what I'm talking about, or I fucking flip flop two words, just I was just out of like just in and yeah. out of my head. I flip flop yeah. two words, and now the whole joke doesn't make sense, yeah. and people are just staring at you. Yeah. And in the moment, I didn't realize that I did that, and then I listen back to it, and I'm like, okay, cool, I don't suck ass, I just made a minor mistake, I'll I won't do it again, like it's just fucking. I don't know. It's just so you can see like now I'm just like ranting and shit. But like this is what goes on in like my head and shit every day for the whole year as mm-hmm. I'm doing these sets, as mm-hmm. I'm grinding and doing all this shit plus the yeah. podcast and everything. Uh, and so it's like I need to take that two week mental break. Otherwise, I'll like overwork myself. Yeah. Type of thing. Yeah. Uh, whereas other people like I know CJ, uh, sometimes he doesn't even record some of his sets. He doesn't listen. But he listened back to some of his sets, uh, but he doesn't write down like his sets or count his sets or whatever. Uh, and it's like I'm so organized and like strategic about like 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 what a science yeah like it really is and like but it's also easier for me because I do like just like set up punchline and like and then even with stories if I tell a story on stage I tell it the same like every time I'm able to just act it in a way to like it's telling it for the first time yeah and it's like but even when I'm doing that it's still the same every yeah. time so I'm able to know I'm able to listen to a tape from you know last night or a tape from two months ago and know that it should be the same like how i'm saying it yeah which is dope other people just riff and like they'll tell it different every time and so it's harder for them to like diagnose so i see why they wouldn't get like lost in the uh like the uh what i should have done yeah as opposed to and it's not like i get lost in it it's just i'll be like fuck why didn't that or like if a joke didn't hit to like, because I know my set now. I know the octaves of where the laugh should be, how long they should be, where they should be, and like you know, base it based on you know the size of the crowd or how things have been hitting or how other comics have been doing, 
uh, and like if a joke doesn't hit to like the peak in my head of where it should hit, mm-hmm. then I'll I'll rearrange right. my set list. Right. Of, I'll bring another joke ahead, and then if it like it's it's so weird how like we'll just fucking like I've never seen like a rapper go out there and just like change his set list because someone didn't have their hands up. You know, like yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so, but like we, it's or, very or, intricate. Or, it's so weird. Yeah. But uh, sorry for that fucking long ass rant. Uh, we're at an hour and forty five. I yeah. actually got to get to work. Um, but, uh, but, uh, I leave the final minute of the podcast to the guest to say whatever, plug whatever, any parting words of wisdom that you might want to leave, anything that you'd want people to hear if you died on the way home. <laughs> um, well, I, I, it was an honor to be with you. I appreciate your time. I do. Um, it means a lot to me. And, uh, yeah, I mean, for anyone struggling out there, <laughs> do the right thing. It's maybe go to an AA meeting. Um, it worked for me because I know in comedy there are a lot of people who probably should should take a look at that in the mirror. Um, and I was one of them. So, and then what else? I don't know. Um, look but don't touch comedy. I really enjoy producing this show in Houston. So come through if you're a comic and you want some time. And um, on the way home, if something I, I didn't say, like, love your kids. I don't know. <laughs> love your kids. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for doing the podcast. This yeah, was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. Cool.